Right, cancelling down to lowest terms. Sometimes in fractions you get something that looks a bit like that. So you've got a number on the top and a number on the bottom, and there is a common factor between the numbers. So have a guess what the common factor might be. Just take a couple of seconds to think. There you go. The common factor of 4. Some people might divide by 2, then divide by 2 again. That's OK. We'll come back to that later. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So the fraction is equivalent to 3 fifths. That means that if you made some orange juice with 12 parts orange juice, 20 parts water, it would taste the same as 3 parts orange juice, 5 parts water, but you just have less of it. Same thing works for larger numbers. So here I've got 28 and 63, 28 60 thirds. Now what times table are the numbers 28 and 63 in? Just remember your times tables, or what's the common factor between those two numbers? That's right, I got 7. They're both in the 7 times table. Now it's 4 7s are 28, and 9 7s are 63. So when you divide 28 by 7, you can write down the, the 4. And when you divide the 63 by 7, you can write down the 9. So that's your equivalent fraction. That fraction is lowest terms, because there's no common factor now left other than 1 between 4 and 9. So there's no number that can go in 4 and go in 9 without leaving a remainder, except 1, which goes into everything. So 4 ninths is special, and it's called lowest terms. Sometimes you, you have numbers that are so large, you can't spot the common factors just by looking. You, know, you can't spot the highest common factor just by looking. So there's a fairly large number, 240 330th. I have to say that fractions like that don't crop up very often. In fact, probably the last time you saw a fraction like that was the last time you studied maths. So we break it down in stages. The obvious one to do is to divide by 10 because both numbers happen to end in 0. So we get 24 30 thirds. That's much smaller now. It's looking easier to deal with. So can you think of a number that goes into 24 and goes into 33 without leaving a remainder? Well, 33 is kind of 3 11s. So we're thinking around 3s. And 3 goes into 24 eight times, doesn't it? So you're thinking about dividing by three, and then you get to eight elevenths. Eleven, of course, is a prime number, so you know you can't go any further, and there's nothing, and nothing that can go into both of them. So here's another example. This one's extremely large, right? Not something you notice every day. 612, 1,638 ths. You know, even our language is quite clumsy when you get to numbers that big. So the first thing to do is note that they're both even numbers. So I, immediately I can divide by 2 just to get the numbers smaller to make them easy to work with. So 612 divided by 2 is 306. 1638 divided by 2, well, 2 into 16 goes 8. 2 into 38 goes 19. So there we are. It's 306 over 819. Smaller numbers. Now, we can't use 2 anymore, can we? So we think about the next number that will divide in both. If you look at 819, it's 81 and then 9, isn't it? So 3 will go into 81 and 3 will go into 9. And it's pretty straightforward to see that 3 will go into 306 because 3 can go into 30 and 3 goes into 6. So if you divide by 3, you end up with 102 over 273. But we're not out of the woods yet, because there's still a common factor. Now, it just so happens that 3 will go into both of those. 3 into 102. Well, 3 into 10 goes 3 remainder 1. Put the 1 next to the 2. 3 into 12 goes 4. All right, so that's 34 on the top. And then 273 is a 27 and a 3. So you know that's going to be 91. So there we are, 34 over 91. That's the, the smallest you can get it, because 3 doesn't go into 34 anymore, and the factors of 91... 91 almost looks like a prime number, but it isn't, but the factors of 91 are fairly difficult to find. So you, you finish. That's lowest terms. There is, as I've mentioned already, a link with prime factors. If we take the previous example, 612, and start looking at the prime factors of that number, you can divide it by 2, and you get 306. Then you can divide that by 2, and you get 153. Then you can divide that by 3, and you get 51. Then you can divide 51 by 3 and get 17. So the numbers in red, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 17, 
are the prime factors of a 612. Now, these will come back on a later slide, but just keep those in your mind for now. The prime factors of the other number, 1,638, again, divide by 2, you get 819, as we saw before. We know that can divide by 3. We know that can divide by 3, but now we make a concerted effort to find the factors of 91. That's tricky. It's actually in the 7 times table. So the red ones again, 2, 3, 3, 7, and 13, are the prime factors. If you multiply those numbers together, they make 1,638. So what you can do is you can write the fraction as a series of prime numbers multiplied together for the top and a series of prime factors multiplied together for the bottom. And of course, you can cross off corresponding pairs of the same prime factor. So we can cancel a 2 and a 2. We can cancel a 3 and a 3. And we can cancel a 3 and a 3 again. And that's it. There's nothing else now that's common to top and bottom. So we've got 2 times 17 on the top and 7 times 13 on the bottom. What we've crossed out is effectively the prime factors of the highest common factor of 612 and 1,638. So 2 times 3 times 3 is 18. That is actually the highest common factor of 612 and 1638. So there's the sum you do, and it, get, it gives us the same answer as before, 34 over 91. But by using prime factors, we're absolutely secure. We know there is no common factor between those two numbers, 34 and 91, and that is a lowest terms fraction. And that's it.